In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak out, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts. Like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus have I gazed towards you in the sanctuary, to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips 
my mouth shall praise you. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. For the first time, our Lord announces his coming passion, death, and resurrection. Notice how he begins, though. He says that he must go to Jerusalem. Must. This is part of the divine plan. Our Lord knows that he has a mission given to him by his heavenly Father. Remember the verse of St. John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, not to condemn it, but to give everlasting life to those who believe. The Father, through the Holy Spirit, gave us Jesus as our Redeemer. Jesus gave himself, offering the perfect sacrifice for our sin, and rose to give us the hope of everlasting life. Together, Father and Son then poured forth the Holy Spirit so that you and I, beginning with our baptism, can truly live the life of grace. We live life now in union with our Lord, looking forward to that fullness of life in the kingdom of heaven. And so therefore, we always have to remember when we face temptation, 
the tomb is empty. Jesus is risen. He's the living Lord and Savior. Always keep that in mind. When Peter hears this, though, Peter is upset. I can understand why. St. Peter saw crucifixion. Living in the area of Galilee, he saw crucifixions, the worst possible, possible execution meted out by the Roman Empire. He doesn't want to see Jesus die this awful death or even be mistreated by scribes and Pharisees and so on. So Peter says, God forbid that this should happen to you. Peter doesn't understand right now the divine plan. He only sees things on a mundane, worldly level, here and now. In saying this, though, it's like Peter's saying, I'm not going to let you do this. You know, I'm going to try to stop this. No, Jesus says to him, get behind me, Satan. You're an obstacle to me. Satan. Now, Jesus doesn't mean Peter is the devil, but the word Satan in Hebrew means the tempter the one who would make a person trip and fall, a stumbling block, a person who would take the other off the right path. Moreover, rather than say you're an obstacle to me, a better word translation would be scandal. You are a scandal to me. You and I well know how scandals can really shock us and even make us trip, take us off the right path. We've seen this. Our dear Lord knows his mission. So he says to his apostles, if you wish to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself. Meaning, God comes first. Specifically, Jesus has to be our Lord and Savior. And with that, we see life through that vision, that lens of faith. Deny yourself Take up your cross, meaning live your life as a Christian. When we were baptized, we were anointed in the sign of the cross. We live that identity according to our vocation. We live it each day, 24-7, we identify with Christ. And we follow him then each day. When we wake up in the morning, we remember we are a Christian. We follow Christ. This is how we are a disciple. And so our Lord says that we have to be mindful each day that he is the Lord and Savior. We're following him safely through this life to everlasting life. Emphasize the fact, again, the tomb's empty. Jesus is the living Lord and Savior, meaning he's with us now. He's not going to abandon us say, do this on your own. He wants to walk with us. How beautiful that is, that Jesus wants to walk with us through this life. This is important to remember because it's not easy being a disciple. We face temptations. We face the Satans. In a sense, we face Satans that come from just living in this world, the lure of money, or material things, power, position, even all those sensual things that are offered to us this day, we always have to see what is true and good in the eyes of God. Not to make those things idle, not to give our souls to those things, but rather to always remember all the things of this world are gifts from God and we need to use them rightly. The hardest kinds of Satans, though, the tempters, are those who say they're disciples, who may be our loved ones, who may even be friends, who would take us off the right path. Just some examples. Now, these examples are not from this parish. They're from 37 other years of priestly life, so you can all relax. I'm not going to use you as an example. But I had, I've known this one young man who was a server at Our Lady of Hope. He went to a Catholic high school, and he was saying to me, 
you know, Father, it's really hard. I said, what do you mean? He said, it's really hard. I try to follow the right path to be a good Catholic. I don't use bad language, at least I try not to. I don't smoke, I don't do weed, I don't abuse alcohol or anything like that. I don't fool around. And some of my friends who go to church even say, you're too Catholic. That's a temptation. And he could say, oh, I'll go off the path and so on. Temptations, get behind me, Satan. Or I've known young people, both men and women, who were struggling with a religious calling. So whether priesthood or religious life, really discerning. And rather than receive encouragement, they were discouraged by family members, discouraged. Family members who said, oh, let someone else do that. Don't waste your life. You're gonna ruin your life. Let someone else. Get behind me, Satan. And I've known young people who faced that and yet did go to seminary, were very happy, or even at times discerned out, but at least they knew what their path was and they're happy. But I've also known those who fell into the wrong path of Satan and pursued other things and live with regret. Maybe I should have been. Maybe I should have been the priest, the religious sister. I've known people too who sadly went through a divorce and divorce is tough, no question about that, then fell in love again. But rather than have a declaration of nullity, meaning that those vows that were professed before God, before family and other witnesses, and to this other spouse are null and void, don't, are no longer binding, the individual decided, oh, I'll just go off and get married again outside the church. And no one said anything. No one said, you know, you have to think. You're a Catholic. This is what you believe. Just look at what Jesus taught in the gospel. You did this publicly. You need to have it declared somehow that this is no longer binding. And yet, they went off. We have to say, get behind me, Satan. We need to do what is right. Or I've known young people too who've gotten into trouble, men and women. They were playing marriage, had a pregnancy occur, what to do. Sadly, sometimes one or the other or both here oh, you need to take care of this problem. This could ruin your career. You have to fix this. And they have an abortion. And sometimes even I've known parents pay for the abortion. And then the person's left with the sadness. And then my brothers and sisters, in our world today, it's amazing how many Catholics do not even get married in church. And I'm like, doesn't anyone even tell them they need to get married in church, that this is a sacrament? You don't get married on the beach or on the roller coaster. We don't, and yet people remained silent. People who could have saved souls remain silent. Those are the Satans. And so we have to remember to always think with the mind of Christ. Think of what our Lord says. He says, what good is it to gain the whole world to yourself and forfeit eternal life? St. Paul said in our second passage, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by a renewal of your mind of what is good, pleasing, and perfect. Simply live life with the Lord. There's the key. And you and I, as good disciples, have to encourage others, including all those situations that I mentioned, encouraged others to make the right decision. Otherwise, people are going to end up with broken hearts, lives of regret, and maybe the cost of eternal salvation. The key is, heaven begins now, walking with our Lord now, and hell begins now, walking without our Lord. And so, my brothers and sisters, we need to encourage others to always follow the right path. For those that do, 
And even in those toughest situations, those who make the right choices find peace, freedom. They find a life free in those circumstances of regret and broken hearts. And so we need to remember, keep our eyes on Christ. Don't conform ourselves to this world, conform ourselves to Christ. Be transformed by him. His kingdom begins now. Well, think of St. Peter. Now, St. Peter, very human in his reaction here. St. Peter, though, witnesses the risen Lord. He encounters the risen Christ. He helps us believe. At Pentecost, filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, he truly is that first pope, that leader of our church. He keeps the church together during the first persecutions at the hands of the Jewish leaders. He saw the stoning of St. Stephen, the first martyr, the martyrdom, the beheading of St. James the Greater around the year 42. St. Peter keeps the church strong in teaching when there's conflicts between the Jewish converts, the Gentile converts, and what to do. Around the year 50, St. Peter travels to Rome. And there, of course, he's the first pope. In 66, Nero begins the first official Roman persecution. The story has it, and this isn't in scripture, but tradition holds that the faithful said, Peter, you're the leader. You need to save yourself for the good of the church and leave Rome. So Peter does. He really doesn't want to, but he does because others have said you need to do this. So he's walking down the Appian Way. He encounters Christ once again. And Peter says to him, Quo vadis, where are you going, Lord? And the Lord says, I'm going back to Rome to be crucified. Peter turned around, went back to Rome. There, in Rome, he was eventually arrested and he was crucified right where St. Peter's Square is. That obelisk that we see today, it was there during St. Peter's crucifixion because they had like a stadium there, what was called the Circus Caligula. St. Peter asked to be crucified upside down because he, in his humility he wanted to, but I think also he wanted to be looking up to heaven to see Jesus welcoming him into heaven. St. Peter died, the good faithful disciple. Today he's remains are buried underneath the high altar of St. Peter's. Atop that obelisk that is still there is now an orb that represents the world. And then on top of that is a cross. Inside the orb though is a relic of the true cross. And it shows us Christ has triumphed. No matter what, no matter how hard it may seem, Christ has triumphed. The tomb is empty, Christ is risen, He's with us, he's never going to abandon us. The key is we have to be faithful. So my brothers and sisters, we could ask ourselves, where are we going? That's what Jesus asks. Well, we have to say, Lord, I'm following you. Deny myself, I'll take up my cross, I'll live by your word, I'll be nourished with your holy Eucharist today, your body, blood, soul, and divinity. And when I leave here, I'm not going to go out to conform myself to this world. I'm going to, by your grace, transform this world for you. May God bless you. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you would be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our military, law enforcement, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of the war in Ukraine, the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people who have begun school, that the Holy Spirit will guide them to do their best and make good decisions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from natural disasters, especially in Hawaii and Florida, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who labor, that they may give glory to God through their work, and for those who are seeking employment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women for our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Deacon James Joseph, Gabriel Godet, Michael Gibbons, and John Anthony Buono, and for Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters in Nashville, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the homebound, and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Thomas Donovan, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions held in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts, and to grant them in accord with thy divine will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, Mary full of Christ. grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst Lord. women, and blessed, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Amen. Mary, Mother of God, pray for, pray for us Lord. sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Today's second collection is to support the Catholic University of America. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
parish announcements as the second collections being taken up. Our poor box collection this weekend is for the Little Sisters of the Poor in Washington. Please take home a copy of the bulletin regarding the start of religious education and registration, the Bible study, inquiry class, youth group events, St. Joseph's League, and other activities. They're all starting once again. This Wednesday, here in church, we'll begin having Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament beginning at the end of the 9 a.m. Mass, and then at 7.30, there will be a holy hour with the offering of the Miraculous Medal Novena, the opportunity for confessions, and then benediction at 8.15. So on Wednesdays, instead of Adoration being in the little chapel next door, Adoration is going to be here. So, with that, Monday's Labor Day, so Mass will be offered at 9 a.m. only, and the parish offices will be closed. You probably noticed on the way in, the Holy Land woodcarvers are here, so Boutrous Kumsea would like to say a few words about the importance of supporting the Christians in the Holy Land. Thank you, Father. Good morning. We are a group. We came from Bethlehem, and our mission is to help the Catholic families and the Christians in Bethlehem to support them to remain in their homes and in their communities. The Christians of Bethlehem, they used to carve olive wood over the years, and these carvings become a tradition and also the main source of income for the majority of the Christians who still live in Bethlehem. Our population, because of the situation, has dropped from 37% just 30 years ago. Today, the Christian population is only 1%. So please stop by our tables in the main entrance and look at these beautiful carvings and try to get one of your Christmas gifts direct from Bethlehem. This is the way that you get beautiful bees and you support your brothers and sisters there. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Father. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen.